Hi, my name is Laura and I'm the owner of Front Office Rocks, an online training resource for dental teams. And I'm also an office manager in a dental office in San Diego, California. I am an EagleSoft user and love EagleSoft as our practice management software and wanted to have the ability to help my team learn EagleSoft better, but found that there wasn't a lot of resources teaching my team how to implement EagleSoft in their day to day. So I decided to make my own. I'm doing videos to help my team get better at implementing EagleSoft. I'm not sponsored by anyone. This is on my own to not only help my team implement EagleSoft better in their day-to-day -day jobs, but now for you to be able to implement this in your practice. I wanna talk now about what these buttons are down the right-hand side of the Edit Patient screen. Uh, if you don't know the rest of these fields, then go back and watch other videos that I've made that talk about all these other fields. But let's go through here now, what are these buttons and why are they important? So the first button here is registration. And registration is basically the information that we have on the patient. You can print the registration as is, you can print a blank registration, and you can print the in without the information. So let's show this, this is print as is, and I wanna just show you, basically it's everything about that's entered into the patient, um, edit patient file or field. Uh, there's really not, um, if you're going paperless, there's really not a lot of reason to print this out unless maybe the patient wants a copy of it or you wanna send it with something. Uh, but other than that, there's really, we don't usually print out a lot of this. However, you may want to do the registration and print as a blank, regist blank registration form. And what that does is that gives you all of these fields empty. The reason you would wanna do this is let's say you have a patient who um, doesn't hasn't filled out the paperwork ahead of time and you want to have a blank registration form a blank form for them to fill out their information now in my office we use yappy so that has made us paperless yappy y-a-p-i so all of our forms are on our website from yappy and then the information comes in directly so very rarely do we have to print this out but let's say we've got a patient here who doesn't know how to use an iPad or potentially they're going to take this home and fill it out um, for somebody that's coming in that needs help. That would be the reason you'd want to print this out. So that's where you can get the registration form. Preferences is probably the most important thing out of all of these. So I'm going to spend the most time on that and then I'll go through the rest of these. Preferences is it has information that um, some things are important, some things aren't as much, depending on your office. But there's a couple fields that you have to really, really, really know about because they're going to help you <laughs> if you fill them out and you do it correctly. So first is employment status. I have to tell you, in my office, I've never selected this. Um, but basically, if you don't know if they're full-time, part-time, or retired, um, I don't even know where that shows up when you fill it out, but if you want to know if the person's retired, then that might be something you could fill it out right there. Let's say they're a student, full-time or part-time student, and you could fill out their school and city and, and, and the address of the school. Again, um, I have not ever needed that. Uh, I guess if an insurance company called me and wanted to know if the patient is full-time or part-time student, but most of the time the insurance company wants to find that out from the parent. So this is just kind of like extra information that we don't necessarily know now or need to know. Now, if you're watching this video and there's a reason that you have that this needs to get filled out, please comment on this video to help others because I don't want to tell you not to fill it out, um, but I don't haven't used it in my office. Uh, I'm not a Medicaid office, so I have not filled this out, but this is if you have Medicaid, you would fill this out. Um, if you have an employee ID or a carrier ID, again, we don't fill this out in our office. So if you have um, insight as to why these would need to get filled out or what they're for, uh, please write comments to help other people who are watching the video. But here's the most important part. Now, I talked about this earlier about over here, we collect patient social security numbers because back in the day, mostly every insurance pulled up patients by their social security number. Now, more and more insurance companies are not using social security numbers. And if this video is out for a long time, you might laugh if I actually say that, you know, maybe at that point, nobody's using social security numbers. So, um, but, so this is where pay, we need to get the information about the patient's ID. 
so that the insurance company will pay the office or pay the patient. And so you'll know the patient's ID when you're calling and verifying the insurance. So this is the primary ID for the patient. And then this is the secondary ID. And this, when it's filled out, will populate the insurance claim when it goes out. What this is, is this, that we've never changed this, I guess, unless somebody were to say they don't want to release the information. But basically what this means is it gives us the okay to release the information that we have on the patient to the insurance company so the insurance company can pay the claim. There is an option where you could put no release info or modified release. We've not, anybody who has insurance in our practice wants us to bill the insurance, and so we've never had a problem with that. Um, but I'm assuming this will show up on the claim form, and I'm not sure what would happen if you put no release or modified release. Um, you're welcome to try it and let us know, or if you know, put it in the comments. Um, this is, again, something to do with um, Medicaid. This is the early and periodic screening and diagnosis and, diagnosis and treatment. It's for children, um, and it's uh, through Medicaid. Again, I don't do Medicaid in my office, but if you do, you're probably familiar with this, and you would select this if you have a child that, that fits into this category. So that's the overview about this. To me, the most two important fields are primary member ID and secondary member ID. This is appointment preferences. Now, I you can select here if somebody prefers AM or somebody prefers PM. Um, I've not done that in my office. We usually don't use this type of preference. We usually use the um, quick fill list and notes in the appointment. Um, but you can select AM and PM. Again, I'm going to tell you, I don't know where that comes, uh, where that shows up. So if you want to learn more about this, I would suggest that you go to the um, to this over here and get help, um, get some live help on where that shows up, okay? So that's time preferences. Now this is failed appointments, canceled appointment, and neither appointment. So what this does is if you, if you mark a patient that they failed an appointment, this, this is gonna um, show how many appointments they failed. If you've canceled their appointment, how many appointments they canceled, and then neither appointments, meaning they didn't fail, they didn't cancel, they just, we had to delete the appointment. Let's say the patient gave us enough notice, but went out of town and we canceled the appointment. Now, this for me is a little bit hard to see in the sense of when you open a patient's file and the patient's trying to cancel on you last minute or no show or, or try to get out of the appointment, and you don't know if this Dr. Tester does this all the time or he does. this is his first time doing it, this becomes a little bit cumbersome to go in here and check. Um, so I, this will record it for you. One of the things I mentioned in the past video is some of the offices I'm working with now are starting to grade their patients. So they're grading their patients in A, B, C, or D, which is basically, you know, A is you've never failed last minute, never canceled. B is you've done it maybe once. C is you've done it a couple times. And D is you're in trouble. Um, so that's where you can determine from here what um, level patient they are. You may have different systems in your office, but just basically, you know, canceled or failed, and you need to know clearly what how it's determined in your practice. This is if a pre-med is necessary. Now, again, anything that has a blue line, you can choose to see the list. So this basically means if a patient needs to pre-medicate before they come for their treatment, we want to select this. And then we can also go ahead and just select what it is that we are um, that they need to pre-medicate for. Now, if you see that from the list, you can pick there or you can do a new one. Uh, I would suggest as the front office staff that you wouldn't add new prescriptions to this. I would suggest that you have the doctor uh, add the prescriptions. We have ours based off of what they do. So if it's an antibiotic, if it's a pain medicine, if it's pre-med. So have your doctor populate this, and this is in a different video where you can see how to do this. And then um, you can select the right pre-med for the patient. This is if the patient is an ortho patient. Now, I don't use this in my practice, um, and I'm struggling with it because we do some Invisalign, but not a lot. If you're doing more ortho in your practice, you may want to learn more about this and how it works. Again, I would recommend you get some live help for that because I don't actually do a lot with ortho, but this is how you can determine how many months of treatment they have left when they started and how often the insurance needs to be billed. Up here are financial preferences. So with this, you can select the 
discount that this patient gets. Now, this is across the board. So let's say this patient is a friends and family in our, in our office. They get a 15% discount. So you can select this. What that means is now going forward, this patient always gets a 15% discount. If you want to add different discounts, you can go right here and do new. And let's say you have a senior discount or you have a military discount, you can add them right here. Okay. Now, fee schedule, you don't want to do anything with this fee schedule unless the um, unless the patient is not in insurance and you want to offer this patient a discounted fee across the board, meaning, um, and I, I don't recommend this. This is why I'm stumbling through this because I don't think you should do this. But let's say you've got a certain demographic of patients that you want to offer them lower fees for whatever reason. You can come up with a separate fee schedule for that those patients and then select it, which means that patient, anytime anything has walked out, they're going to get that lower or whatever fee that you've put in here. Um, but you're not going to put in here the insurance fees because the insurance fees are going to come from what you have in the insurance, okay? Uh, this is if you have a preferred dentist, and this is if you have a preferred pharmacy. You can pick the pharmacy, and then now when we're calling in prescriptions, you don't have to ask the patient every time which pharmacy do you prefer. And you can add new pharmacies right here by just going in and entering the new pharmacy. So I would recommend doing that and populating it with your most popular, most used, most called insur or, um, pharmacies so that you have that there to pull from. This seems like a simple little thing, but it's super huge. This is how you make a patient active or inactive. So if a patient is inactive, meaning they're not going to come to your practice anymore, then you unselect this and it makes them inactive. Now, I think this should have a bigger like, hey, this is what you're doing when you click this button. Uh, so it's important to know that what this is doing, it's basically taking this patient out of active status. So if you're calling on recare patients or if you're calling overdue or outstanding treatment plans and you're looking at active patients, if this is not selected, they're not going to come up on the list. So you need to determine in your office what makes a patient active or inactive. I personally don't think you should inactivate a patient unless they tell you they're going somewhere else or you don't want them back. Um, don't let that be an easily click on and click off uh, field in your practice because it can really mess up your patient numbers. All right, next is the recall preferences. And this is where you can set up for patients. Like let's say you have a patient, let's say you typically give a patient an hour, but you wanna give the patient longer for their cleanings because they talk a lot and they're a gagger. You can change the amount of times for the cleaning. You can change their preferred hygienist and you can change their recall frequency. Now this is important because if the, if the, if, we have it set up to six months. That patient is only going to show up on your recare list at the six month mark. If you want the patient to come in more frequently, three or every three or four months, you want to change it to three or four months. So that way the patient shows up on your recare list at month three and not month six. Now you should always be pre appointing your patients before they leave, but patients do fall through the cracks. And so you want to make sure that this number gets changed. In my office, our hygienists change it. So when the hygienist determines that the um, patient needs to come in every three months or every four months, they change the number in here. So that way it comes up on the list appropriately to the amount of time between their appointments. And then this is if they receive recalls or not, meaning you might have an active patient, but let's say they don't come in for cleanings. Let's say they go somewhere else for their cleanings or they, I don't know, whatever the reason may be, if you want to keep them active, but you, they don't want to come in for recares, you unselect that. And then, then this is just the productivity of the patient, how much they've, they've um, charged, how much production we've done for them this year, how much collections, how many visits they've had, when we entered it, their first visit date, how long they've been a patient of ours. I never have really noticed this before sitting here with you doing this training. So um, now that you notice it, hopefully it'll, it'll help you with, I don't know, determining the history of your patient, which leads you to history. This will show you every procedure that was done and when. So when a patient calls in and says, I had a tooth fixed last month or last year, you can go to the history right here and be able to know, you know, let's say they say, I don't know which doctor to talk to about it. You can go right here and see which provider they worked with. This is patient alert. So if you want a patient alert, let's say you want to, they have to pre-med and you want a separate alert that's going to come up, you would add the patient alert here. And so this way, when you open the patient, you will edit 
Do you see that comes up right here? So now I've added the alert for this patient. Now I'm gonna do a separate video just on alerts because this list can get so super long and I don't want everybody just adding alerts here and there because it's not gonna be very useful. So just be careful of the alerts. Make sure you pick from this list and I'll show you another video how to, how to manage that. This is a memo about the patient. This does not print anywhere as far as I know. So this is more of stuff that you would wanna say about the patient like, um, very particular about giving us a social security number or um, usually shows up five minutes late. So try to confirm five minutes early. This isn't stuff you would put in the patient uh, appointment screen. This is something that's gonna be just kind of private notes about the patient, but your team needs to know to look there if you're gonna use it. Uh, prompts, this is if you have specific questions that you ask your patient, as you can tell, we don't in our office, but let's say you wanna get the patient's name or, or their, not their name, their, their spouse's name, or there's something you ask in your practice, then you would add the question right there. This is how you send letters to your patient, but I don't send letters to my patient, so we never use this. We do emails and text messages, but if you wanted to send letters to your patient, let's say you're getting out of network for all your insurances, you can set up a letter right here. You would need to go to FAQs for help with that. This is your missing tooth, so if the patient's missing any teeth, we don't handle this usually on the front in my practice. That's handled when they get the exam in the back, and then it will show here if they're missing any teeth. Again, I don't click on that very often. This is referrals. This is important because this will show you if the patient, and I think you should ask every patient how they were referred to the practice, and then you should select from the list, they came to us from Yelp or they came to us from Google, okay? And then if they were referred out, so let's say we wanna make sure that everybody shows where they were referred to. And then if you refer them out, you can add the specialist that you refer to when they were referred and when they're due to return. Uh, again, label and envelope is the same as letter. I'm not gonna do that. Prescription history, this would show you the prescription that we've written for the patient or sent in in the past. So that way if the patient calls in and has a question or they need it refilled, you can see the prescriptions that were ever you know, done for the patient. Uh, medical history is right here. So when the medical history form is filled out, then all of this is marked. And so you can see their medical history. From here, you can go right to the account screen. So if we can now start to look at the account, the balances, so you can click right from the edit screen there. Eligibility is how we can do electronic eligibility for the patient. So when we have the insurance company in, we can select OK, and it will do an electronic check to see if we can get the most up-to-date information about this patient's insurance. I'm going to do more of that in another video, but just know that this, it's a one quick button. You select eligibility, you select OK, and it will, within a matter of a few seconds, come back and let you know whether or not you can um, verify their insurance electronically. Smart Documents is where we scan everything in. There'll be another video on that, but all of the documents for this patient can be found right there in Smart Dots. And then Care Credit, where there's an integration with Care Credit so that we can go ahead and do the application process right here from the EagleSoft field with the patient. So that are all, that's all the buttons over here. There's a lot there, but really we only use, honestly, preferences, um, accounts, you know, a little bit of the histories. In your office, it might be different. Um, so make sure you play around with these and you get used to them um, because they're there to help you make, you know, make your life easier when it comes to trying to find information like the alerts for the patient or the history or their eligibility make sure you're well versed in in these extra buttons that EagleSoft has put here for you. And if you want more training on this, I highly recommend that you go to the tutorials, the FAQs and live help to make sure that you've got this set up appropriately for your practice. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a resource that I've developed for my team, but I wanted to share it with your team because I know what it's like to be in the dental office day to day and how to make this help us do our jobs better. So please make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can see more videos coming your way. Put comments at the bottom to let us know how you're implementing this part of EagleSoft in your practice. And if you want to learn more about how to implement great training in your dental office, you can find me at frontofficerocks.com.